Dealing with moon balls on your one-handed backhand can be one of the most difficult shots in tennis. And that's why in this video, I want to kind of talk through the options of what's possible and then talk through what you probably should be doing and show you ways to practice it and work on it to really improve your ability to deal with really tricky balls on your single-handed backhand. Hopefully you enjoy the video and find it helpful. If you do, give me that thumbs up. And if you aren't already a subscriber to my channel, it's always much appreciated if you could subscribe as well. So when you're dealing with a moon ball on your one-hander, there's a few options of what you could potentially do. Obviously, the first variation is you recognize it nice and early, you step in and you take the ball off the rise and just crush your opponent's soul for daring to hit a moon ball to your glorious one-handed backhand. But realistically, that's probably not the option to go for because it's one of the hardest shots in tennis. If you could play that sort of shot consistently, you most likely wouldn't be watching this video about how to deal with moon balls. You'd be out there crushing lower level opponents. The same thing is gonna go for being fairly aggressive and taking the ball, you know, rising or maybe on the apex a little bit higher. Yes, it's possible to hit a one-handed backhand up there. Or if you're um, Shapovalov, you could be jumping up and then hitting a one-handed backhand but that's right up there with this ball that's on the rise. It is exceedingly difficult to do that with any level of consistency, so it's probably not the option to go for. The first realist op realistic option that you might have is dealing with it by playing a high slice backhand. So hitting a one-hander with topspin or a flat ball from up there, very challenging. Hitting a slice one-handed backhand up there can be a little bit easier. Now, it's still actually quite a challenging shot for a lot of people. Definitely worth practicing and working on your ability to hit that ball. I know it was one of my favorite shots when I used to play with a single-hander, but what's gonna be the better option for most people is recognizing where the ball is going early, respecting the quality of the moon ball because it's a fantastic tactic, getting back as quickly as you can so then you can hopefully step in and play the ball from a more comfortable height. So that's the option that we're gonna be talking about here. And what we're gonna focus on is kind of breaking down the movements of the ball so that you can set up in the right position. And then talking about a couple of different footwork options you might need to actually kind of hit through the ball once you've set up in position. The key to dealing with this deep moon ball with your one-hander is gonna be how quickly you can get back. Because ideally, we're gonna be getting back quickly enough to give us space to then step in and hit from a neutral or some variation of a closed stance. Because for the one-handed backhand, that's just by far the easiest footwork pattern to be using as you're making contact with the ball. So we need to look at how we're gonna move back because the way that you do it is really important. Now. Early ball recognition is essential, but we'll talk about that in a moment here. We're just gonna break down the footwork. It starts with a good split step, and the way you do this split step is a big deal. If you land with your feet close together, that is gonna make it really hard to move quickly in any direction, but especially going backwards. So we need to land a little bit wider hip width to and a half to two hip widths apart and this is something that you're just going to have to practice getting used to and the reason it's important to be wide is because we're going to be doing a drop step in a moment obviously we'll be opening up and doing the drop step but this is how we move laterally or backwards really quickly so we've got to land nice and wide on the split step we need to lower our center of gravity. So I'm bending my knees, leaning my body weight forwards, and I'm on the balls of my feet. And these pieces are all designed to help me be reactive and push off and springy. So as soon as I realize where the ball's going, I can drive backwards. So the split step comes first, then we've got the drop step. If I was just moving laterally, so I'm facing you now as if you're coming from down that end, the drop step's gonna look like this. I'm gonna drop the ball of my foot underneath my hip. But when we're moving backwards, it's gonna look different. So now I have to open up. So I'm opening up from here and then dropping my foot underneath. And we're gonna be pushing off this leg at the same time. So I'm opening up, pushing off that leg. But as I push off that leg, this hip comes underneath. So it's very hard to do it in complete slow motion due to the effect of gravity. But it's land, push off, step, because that allows you to cover ground. So it's a case of just practicing that over and over again and it's a difficult movement so when we're playing I'm going to be looking down that end of the court 
but depending how your body's functioning, this is tremendously difficult in terms of coordination and in terms of balance because I'm moving backwards while looking forwards. So you might need to practice it by looking in the direction that you're going just to get used to it. But then once you've got it, then obviously you're gonna to start to look down the other end of the court. Now, as I do this, hopefully you can notice what's happening to my upper body. It's basically one movement as I open up, I change my grip and get my racket ready because what we don't want, we don't want to arrive back here with a racket down there because then we still got the time crunch whereas now we've got to take our racket back. So we need to arrive in position ready to either step into the ball or do a different variation. Now that's the first step. You've got to practice it over and over again until it's second nature. And then we've got a couple of options for moving back further. The first one is a shuffle step. So we've done this crossover step, then we're gonna do a shuffle step. So crossover, shuffle, step in, or maybe we need a couple of crossover steps. So crossover, maybe we add a shuffle on the end, but often just doing two crossover steps is gonna be enough. I find the majority of the time I can get back with a crossover and a shuffle, but it's going to depend on leg strength, flexibility, and all that good stuff. But you do need to practice it. Again, repetition, repetition, repetition. Until you've done these a bunch of times without the ball there, it's probably not going to happen with the ball there. So get those reps in, practice being in position, and then we're going to work on what we're doing with our feet after that next. But what we need to mention here is the importance of that early ball recognition, because it doesn't matter how good your footwork is, if you're really slow to react, it messes everything up. And that is really what holds so many players back. Their visual systems don't function well enough to allow them to read where the ball is going quickly enough. So to help you with that, I've actually created a free program because vision is trainable. You can improve it, get faster reactions, better ball tracking, better timing, and I wanna help you. So there's a link up there and down in the description. Click on either of those links, it's gonna take you over to a different page, enter your details there, and I'll send you a free vision program. And if you start working on that, it's gonna make a huge difference in this area. So now that we're back in position, we've gotta look at the way that we're gonna hit the ball. And as I've already said, by far, the preferential choice is gonna to be to step in and hit from a neutral or closed stance variation. So hopefully we got back in time, we loaded into this outside leg, we finalized our unit term, and now we've got time to allow the ball to drop into a comfortable position and we can just step in and hit through it. So that is gonna be what you're aiming to try and do if it's at all possible. And if you're quick at moving back, Often this is gonna be possible unless it's a really good quality moon ball with quite a bit of topspin on, in which case we might need some other options. But if you get your homework done on the first part, improve the visual function, improve the movement back, most of the time you'll be able to hit with this neutral close stance variation. But just in case you are short on time, I'm gonna show you just an additional variation of footwork pattern that you might need. And it's gonna look a little bit like this. So it's gonna allow you to hit the ball as you're moving back. So it's a mogul step where we're still loading off this outside leg, but now we're driving through. And as I initiate the swing, my right leg is gonna come across as a counterbalance. So I load and hit as a counterbalance. And this is an unusual movement. So you need to practice it without the ball first. If you haven't done this footwork pattern before, it's gonna be very unlikely that the ball will come deep in a match and you'll do it. So you have to practice. I'm loaded in position. I'm gonna be driving to initiate the swing with this hip because we're always loading, or sorry, we're always driving through the back or outside hip. And then as I swing forwards, my right leg comes across. Okay, and then you just make it more dynamic. And you just do enough repetitions until you come become completely comfortable with it. And at that point, then you'll be able to do it a little bit more naturally when you're out on court. But these are really our two main options with the one hander. You can step in or you can do this mogul step. 
higher levels there's other shots that we might be able to play but honestly it's going to be way too much too soon for most people focus on programming the footwork moving back get the visual side of things going and that's going to be your absolute best bet as you're kind of improving your skill level and then eventually hopefully you'll get to the point where you can step in and take it on the rise and do things like that but they really are much more difficult in terms of the timing so they're much higher levels a shot Okay, hopefully this video has been helpful to you. If it has, give me that thumbs up. Any comments, uh, leave them down below and uh, I will catch you next time.